Hi there, science fans. Welcome to another episode of Science and Other Stuff for Senior Citizens. My name is Dan Casciano. If you like these COVID videos, please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to be informed of future videos. Recently, one of my viewers requested that I develop a video that describes the human immune system in everyday terms. This complex system is worthy of further assessment because it is the primary defense mechanism humans have developed to protect us from dangerous foreign pathogenic invaders. I have given quite a bit of thought to how I can do this without reducing the complexity and value of this incredibly important system. I came up with the use of an everyday tool that is familiar to most of us, namely the barcode system. In the following descriptions, I hope to relate the uniqueness of each barcode to the uniqueness of each cell that makes up the immune system. When I describe a cell undergoing clonal expansion, it will mean a single cell type dividing and growing into many cells to form a colony of cells, each having identical functions. Similarly, a barcode that represents a single banana is the same unique barcode that represents a bunch of bananas or a truckload of bananas. The bananas are identical. All that has changed are their numbers. Please provide feedback on the present video in the comment section, as well as questions and suggestions for future videos. In the next two slides, I will describe the innate and adaptive immune system in an understandable way. This slide describes the innate immune system. The diagram on the left shows several of the white blood cell types that make up this response. Included in the diagram are the individual functions of each of the cell types. The innate immune system acts as first responders that recognize a foreign invader like the COVID-19 virus and attempts to destroy that invader before it can infect the host cell. Like a fireman in the fire station, the innate system remains dormant until called to action. The cells of the innate immune system circulate in the body constantly looking for potential danger. Sometimes the danger is too intense for the responders and others must be called upon to prevent further damage. Recently, scientists have found that children and young adults have a very strong innate immune system that seems to destroy foreign invaders prior to their ability to infect responsive cells. This finding may be one of the reasons these individuals seem to be resistant to COVID-19 infections. On the other hand, it is known that the immune system of older humans deteriorates at, as they age, and both the innate and adaptive immune systems are affected. The adaptive immune system is portrayed in this slide. Unlike the first responders, the adaptive system resembles the pandemic responders. Pandemics usually occur after a foreign invader takes hold in a society, and normally there is a period of time after the invasion before a substantial defense is generated. In the case of the adaptive immune system, this takes between 24 to 48 hours post-invasion, depending upon the host as well as the invader. The cells in the left diagram, the B cells and T cells, are called upon to clonally expand, that is, increase their numbers, and defend against the invaders either through the formation of antibodies or by killer cells and memory cells. I included this information to remind us of the COVID-19 infection pathway timeline. What is important to note is the incubation period. Depending on the individual, the incubation period on average is around seven days. During this time, there is an pre-symptomatic infectious period of anywhere between three to seven days where we don't display any symptoms associated with COVID-19 infection. However, we can be infectious, meaning we can unknowingly pass the virus to someone, a colleague, family member, or any person we come in contact. The existence of this period is one of the many reasons to follow the CDC guidelines. Additionally, the innate immune period generally occurs in the first two days of infection, while the adaptive immune period generally starts on day two to, to day 14 of infection. The symptomatic period usually takes place from day seven to day 14, and the infection period occurs between day three 
and day 14. The B and the T cells of the adaptive immune system are mainly responsible for protecting us from a foreign invader that has overwhelmed our innate immune system. These cells respond to a specific invader, while the white blood cells of the innate immune system respond to nonspecific invaders, much like our police, fire, and healthcare first responders. When a virus like COVID-19 invades, some of the naive circulating B and T cells are activated to defend us against that particular virus. In the left diagram, the B cell clonally expands into a colony, meaning that a large number of identical cells are formed from a single B cell. Those cells then produce antibodies that are specific to COVID-19. The antibodies are usually formed to react with the spike protein of the virus that then prevents entry of the virus into the non-infected cell, thus preventing further spread of the virus. The length of time that the antibodies continue to circulate in the body depends upon the infecting pathogen. In the case of the flu virus, the antibody usually has a lifetime of about one year, which means we need to be vaccinated on a yearly basis to prevent reinfection. In the right diagram, the T cell clonally expands to form a colony of cells that can destroy infective cells. These also produce T memory cells that will quickly respond to eliminate the infection when infected again at a later time. In some instances, these T memory cells were able to generate an immune response many years after the initial infection. Finally, we come to the barcode analogy. On the left side of the diagram, I represented several invading organisms, in this case, viruses. Each of these viruses has a unique signature that is recognized by the host immune system. Think of a unique barcode as the unique signature. For example, the COVID-19 unique signature or barcode is different from all other pathogens. Once the barcode is recognized by our immune system, the adaptive immune system seeks out the pathogen and tries to destroy it. If you look at the right side of the diagram, the unique signatures of our own cells are depicted as unique barcodes. We don't usually attack our own cells because we recognize the barcodes as self. During fetal development in the womb, our developing immune system surveys each of our cells and stores our unique information and remembers not to attack self. Sometimes, because of mutations or certain developmental anomalies, the immune system makes mistakes and inadvertently attacks self. These types of events lead to autoimmune diseases like lupus and others. This slide describes what happens when a pathogenic virus like COVID-19 invades a human. COVID, with its unique signature, initiates a sequence of events that leads to development of an immune response. The innate immune response is nonspecific and recognizes COVID as a foreign invader and immediately responds to eliminate the threat. After a period of time, the adaptive immune system comes into play, marshalling B and T cells to rid the body of the virus. B cells are activated to become plasma cells that are responsible for the formation of unique antibodies to COVID-19. T cells are activated to change into a variety of T cell types, one of which develops into COVID T memory cells. The activated B and T cells then eliminate COVID from the body and the patient recovers. Some COVID T memory cells continue to circulate and only become activated again upon a subsequent invasion by COVID-19. The adaptive response is then shortened because of these memory cells. The T memory cells change or differentiate to drive the process depicted in this slide to eliminate the new invasion. The human immune system is an extremely complex system that includes a humoral and a cellular component. It recognizes self through surveillance during fetal development in utero. It detects and eliminates foreign invaders such as bacteria and viruses. Extremely robust during early childhood, and young adulthood and deteriorates significantly as one ages.
For more information about science, visit my website at www.dcasciano.com. If you have any questions or would like me to develop a video on a specific science subject, leave them in the comment section below or email me at dan at dcasciano.com. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell so you can be informed when I upload a new video. Thank you for watching Science and Other Stuff for Senior Citizens. Bye.